<laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you to the organizers for organizing such a fantastic conference, and thank you to you all for taking your time out of your busy day uh, to come and uh, listen to us. So um, I want to start off with a, a brief introduction as to what we're doing. You know, this morning we've really we talked about energy, we've talked about blockchain, and the previous speaker gave a very good um, example uh, and outlined blockchain as a technology. So I really wanted to put the two things together and talk about what does a, an energy company of the future look like incorporating blockchain. So hopefully over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll give you uh, an idea of what Energy Mine is doing and also what, where we believe the energy company of the future uh, is, is heading to. So just as a very brief introduction, uh, as to what we do. So my, my background, uh, uh, I'm the CEO of Energy Mine. My background is as an energy trader. So I started off trading oil uh, in London uh, and then moved on to the uh, electricity and gas markets um, across Europe uh, before starting a, a number of companies. And the latest company we started was Energy Mine, which uses um, artificial intelligence and blockchain to uh, solve some of the uh, problems that, that have been spoken about so far uh, in terms of energy trading and excessive energy consumption. Uh, so we're based in Manchester uh, in, in the UK. So I won't talk too much about what blockchain is because I think the previous speaker covered it very well. Um, but clearly we're here because we believe in the um, immense transformative potential that blockchain allows us. Um, you know, looking at the applications, when I look at the whole blockchain space, I think actually energy is one of the most uh, uh, interesting areas to apply this technology to because of the level of complexity and the dominance, the traditional dominance of, of, uh, uh, of the sector by a small number of uh, large players. So what will blockchain allow us to do uh, as an economy? Well, blockchain will really allow us to solve a lot of the inefficiencies in the energy markets. You know, for most of you that are familiar with how the energy markets work, I think we will say that it's incredibly inefficient in the way that it operates. Uh, there are huge opportunities for efficiencies, and we really believe blockchain uh, is able to deliver that in, uh, to remove the administrative burden to facilitate things like peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, increases in energy efficiency, and the adoption of new technologies. So this, this will naturally give rise to more competition in the market. So I wanted to touch on one of the biggest problems uh, that we're facing, and, and again, some of the earlier speakers touched on this. And you know, to put things very simply, we cannot go on at the levels of energy consumption that we're seeing so far without uh, permanently damaging the planet. So depending on who you speak to, we have many uh, uh, academics here that have spoken at length about uh, energy consumption and the environmental aspects. Um, I wanted to touch upon how blockchain can help us solve some of these uh, problems. And the first one being excessive energy consumption in the economy. So, uh, the rate that we're using energy is not slowing down. Cities are growing. We're becoming more and more urbanized as economies. And that is naturally leading to excessive energy consumption. Even though we have the emergence of renewable energy, um, we're not investing enough in renewable energy compared to how much we're using as an economy. And this is going to create a, a potentially irreversible impact on the economy. So for decades now, governments have tried different techniques to help people to uh, use less energy. And so far, the approach has largely been trying to convince people that they should show more responsibility uh, towards uh, the environment. And our approach is slightly different at Energy Mine. You know, rather than me stand here, you all know about the damage that excessive energy consumption is doing to the planet. We chose a different uh, technique um, to, to, to achieve the same outcome. So our overall goal is to reduce energy consumption. And instead of lecturing people about the damages we're doing to the economy, we, th we thought we'll use the oldest mechanism 
that is known to humankind, and that is to incentivize people. So actually incentivize people to use less energy. Energy 시장은 닫혔습니다. 그리고 소수의 큰 회사들에 의해 지배당하고 있습니다. 에너지 회사들은 가장 높은 가능 가격의 대부분의 에너지를 파므로써 이득을 보고 있습니다. 이 말은 당신의 에너지 소비를 줄임으로써 얻는 실제 이득이 없었다는 뜻입니다. 지금까지는요. 에너지 마이는 세계적인 에너지 수요를 줄이기 위한 보상 플랫폼으로서 만들어졌습니다. 사용자들은 에너지 절약하는 태도를 취함으로써 에너지 토큰으로 보상을 받습니다. 토큰은 대중교통을 이용하거나 에너지 소비 효율이 높은 것을 사거나 전기 차량을 사는 등의 활동을 하면 보상으로써 받을 수 있습니다. 그럼 토큰은 에코 시스템 내에 남아 있으며 일반적인 에너지 사용료나 전기 차량이 비용을 내는 데 사용될 수 있습니다. 우리는 태도적 변화가 정말 어려운 것이라고 생각합니다. 그래서 이것을 시작하는 시점에서 재정적인 보상이 필요합니다. 우리의 토큰 기반 플랫폼을 이용하여 우리가 우리의 행성의 자원을 보존하기 위해 정부, 규제 담당가, 그리고 세계 에너지 회사들과 일하고 있습니다. 에너지 마이는 실제 고객들과 존재하는 수익이 있는 실제 회사입니다. 우리 시스템은 이미 5개국에 1,100개의 건물들을 구현했고 세계의 큰 회사들에도 우리 시스템이 있습니다. 우리는 에너지 섹터에 혁명적 변화를 일으킬 계획을 세우고 있습니다. 에너지가 거래되고 소비되는 방법을 변화시키는 것으로 말입니다. 에너지를 사람들에게 돌려주는 우리와 함께 하세요. So hopefully that gives you a very brief overview of the project, um, uh, what we're really looking to achieve. And the project is is really looking to tackle a number of issues that have been spoken about today. First and foremost, we mentioned the excessive energy consumption that we're using as a society. So we're using blockchain technology uh, and tokens, reward tokens, to incentivize good behavior. So I'll give you a very quick example of how we're doing that. So you can earn our token called energy token by engaging in energy saving behavior. So such as taking public transport or buying energy efficient appliances uh, or um, um, saving energy in the workplace, for example. The idea that you get awarded energy tokens for engaging in that behavior, which you can then spend on energy related products like charging electric vehicles or paying domestic energy bills, for example. The second issue that we're looking to tackle is, of course, peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. So the idea that, you know, historically we've had very large power stations, whether it be nuclear, gas, coal, and that electricity has distributed uh, to millions of customers in a society. That is changing. So what we're seeing already, we're already seeing uh, decentralized energy generation. So solar panels, wind turbines are being installed on a micro level. But what we don't have yet really is a reliable, robust energy trading platform because all the energy is still traded through a central entity. So if I can share with you one story. Um, so I advise a lot of energy companies globally uh, on their strategy. And I was speaking to uh, an energy company in, in the US, in America. And they're one of the biggest players in, in that market. And I explained to them what I've just mentioned, and I said, you know, sooner or later, you are going to get this decentralized economy where everybody will have the capability to, to generate and trade their own energy. And when I got to the end of the presentation, their, their team said to me that, but that means that we'll go, we'll go bust, we'll go bankrupt, if what you say is true. And I said, no, not, not necessarily. I said, if you do not change your business model, if large energy companies do not change their model, absolutely one of them or a few of them will become like Nokia. Nokia, the mobile phone manufacturer, went from 51% market share of global sales to about 2%. That will happen in the energy space to large energy companies who do not change their business models. So it doesn't mean the end for large energy companies. But what it means is that the, the, the model will change. So the model will change from a centralized energy company providing energy to millions of homes from large power stations to perhaps a large energy company acting as a platform to allow end users to trade energy with each other. So the whole energy ecosystem is what energy companies of the future are trying to build. 
So there are a number of energy companies who are looking to uh, build the technology, uh, their companies on the technology of the future. And this slide gives you an example of where the different sort of interactions are. And I think one of the speakers this morning touched upon mobility and transport as, as a key area. So the problem we have with transport is, you know, governments across the world. So I, I come from the UK. In the UK, we have a, uh, a target that by 2040, we will um, only sell electric vehicles. And in certain parts of Europe, it's 2030, a lot earlier. Now, absolutely, we have to move to a future with electric vehicles and electric transportation. The problem we're going to have is the stress that that puts on infrastructure, on, on, on the, the, the grid systems and the transmission and distribution systems. So it is going to need a very innovative and creative a solution to be able to balance the grid to enable uh, uh, us to, to cope with this mechanism of having multiple millions of vehicles charge uh, energy at the same time. Um, actually, one of our sister companies uh, produced one of the first electric trucks uh, in the UK. And our, the salespeople at this energy company are having to turn a lot of clients away and saying, yes, we can sell you one truck or two trucks, but we don't want to sell you 200 trucks because you won't be able to charge them. So this problem of infrastructure uh, is real, and it's, and it's companies that are, are, are using this sort of technology to address these problems that we feel will be dominant in the future. So this idea of rewarding people for saving energy, you know, changing human behavior, is one of the hardest things to do as, as a business. Um, you, you, you know, fundamental human behavior is still uh, about what is in it for me. So, you know, how many of you have in your workplace have been told to save energy or at home uh, have the same conversations? If somebody's telling you constantly to save energy, at some point you'll say, well, it doesn't really make much of a difference to me. So, you know, I'm not going to engage in that behavior. So we need to change our mindset and start rewarding people on a micro level for making these small uh, uh, improvements in their life from an energy efficiency perspective. And we believe, you know, using the token model uh, with blockchain is, is a fantastic way to do that. Um, I can give you an, a, a small example of, of how this can be used. So I imagine a, a, a manufacturer, a factory spending $10 million a year on energy. And for years, the CEO has been telling his staff, if you save energy in our workplace, um, uh, it will be better for us, we'll save energy, we'll become more profitable. That, that story doesn't really work. It doesn't really motivate people. So what you see normally is a small group of people will, in, will take that on board, normally for a few weeks, and then the behavior will stop. Because the incentive mechanism is not right. It's not that we don't care, it's that we don't have the incentive to enable us to continue that behavior. So with this technology, what we can do via, via a smart contract, we can plug our technology directly into the smart meters of the same manufacturer. So now we can track exactly how much energy is being used. And what we can do is we can automatically deploy the reward to the staff in the factory without the staff needing to trust their management. So for example, if we say that the CEO of the factory could say, okay, we're spending $10 million a year on energy. If you save $1 million, so you save 10% through your behavior, we will reward you by 100,000 or $200,000 in tokens. Now what we have is we have a, a motivated workforce because now as a, as a factory worker, I don't need to trust my manager because I don't see the energy bills. So in the old system, I would need to trust that my manager is going to give me the reward he says he's going to give me. With blockchain and with smart contracts, everything is automatic. So with our systems, for example, we can automate that whole process so we can plug directly into the meters, we can track how much the factory is using. As soon as that 10% threshold is hit, we can deploy our tokens into 5,000 uh, apps on mobile phones and, and give all the staff their tokens. Those tokens have a monetary value. They can be used to cash out or they can be used for uh, charging electric vehicles um, and so on and so forth. The other big uh, area 
is uh, that, that we touched upon is um, uh, transportation. So this issue of energy, I, I, again, I think uh, uh, one of the professors earlier on mentioned that energy uh, is, is one of the, um, uh, transportation is one of the biggest uh, um, expenditures of energy. Uh, and and we, we, we firmly believe that, that there will be a drive to move people onto shared, shared transport and uh, on uh, green transport. But there's huge infrastructure problems to solve um, on this point. So let me take a, a little bit of a, a step forward. Uh, uh, we're running a little bit short of time and give you a scenario of the future. You know, this, this forum is called the Future Energy Forum. So what does the future energy market look like? So we've heard a lot about peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. So we're going to move from a centralized trading setup to a decentralized system where people are trading energy with each other. But what we would argue, and certainly what we're building, is a step further than that, and this is machines trading with each other. So let, let me give you uh, an example uh, of what I mean by that. So a typical person in a home is going to have lots of electrical devices. In the very near future, uh, those devices will all be connected, IoT devices. Now, what will happen is if you think about every electrical appliance in that home, whether it's a vehicle, a microwave, a washing machine, or a refrigerator, each of those appliances are effectively a node on a network. And those nodes are responsible for their own P&L, their own trading. So what will happen? Of course, in your home, you want your refrigerator to be on 24 hours a day. But you might want your washing machine to finish washing your clothes at 6 AM. You might want your vehicle to be charged by 7 AM. So what will happen is you will have an algorithm will work out the equation for you. And each of those nodes will be trading with other nodes to trade energy at the cheapest possible time, all automatic with no humans involved. So while you sleep, your washing machine will be trading energy with your neighbor's car, and that will be trading energy with your refrigerator. And that will all happen automatically. Now, we talked about big energy companies, and I know there are some big energy companies in the room. So <clears throat> what is the angle? What is the play here for energy companies? What needs to happen to, to, to um, uh, make this vision a reality? What needs to happen in that situation is that is there needs to be companies that become the exchange for those nodes to trade on. So instead of me building a nuclear power station and selling energy to consumers, maybe I build a platform, the exchange, that those IoT devices trade energy on. So I allow other people to generate their own energy and trade, and I become a facilitator of those transactions. And that's where we see <coughs> the, the opportunities uh, over the next five to 10 years in the energy space. I wanted to talk again about uh, rewards before we finish. Um, so if you've got, you know, for, for people in this room, energy is interesting. For me, energy is interesting. For millions of people out there, energy is the last thing that they want to think about. This technology, as we develop it, it should be frictionless, meaning it should be something that people don't think about, they don't need to think about. You know, we want to think about energy. Millions of people out there, they don't want to think about energy. They, people don't necessarily want to know that it's blockchain, um, that it's AI, that it's IoT. They just want it to work. So it's companies like the companies I find in this room that have the responsibility to develop that technology in a very consumer-friendly way. Um, and the easiest example uh, or the, 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 one of the most popular interfaces people will have with energy is, of course, their vehicles. So it's part of the reason we're developing technology to allow people to earn rewards um, in the workplace by being energy efficient, but then using those rewards within the energy ecosystem. So for example, our token can be earned in the workplace, or it can be earned by taking the metro. Those same tokens can then be used as a currency to charge their electric vehicles in this manner. So really, it's about creating a system which uh, is very easy to use, very easy to understand. So just to finish off then uh, on the potential, and I know we're touching on it uh, very soon in terms of 
what the global market looks for this. You know, I can say that for, for our business, 60% of the contributors to our project were from Korea. So Korea is a very interesting uh, market for us, not only because of the, the awareness of blockchain technology within Korea, but also because Koreans are very good at uptaking new technology very quickly. And in terms of the drive towards electric vehicles and electric transportation, we feel that uh, particularly Korea and Japan will outperform Europe. And certainly within, within our business, we, uh, we're seeing the Korean and Japanese sides of our business accelerate a lot faster than our European side, simply because of the understanding of, of this, this amazing technology. So um, uh, I won't take up any much more of your time. Uh, I know we're a little bit short on time, but I wanted to thank everybody for their time, and uh, we will be here all day to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. 네, 오마르 아임님께 뜨거운 박수 부탁드립니다. Thank you, sir.